Hi, let me just check out your file. So, I don't know which uh, object you would like to look 3D printed. I'm just going to assume that you want this uh, housing here, this case to be 3D printed. So, let's see. Um, rendered view. What do we have? Cycles. Okay, first of all, you want to switch this to experimental. In the dead is so that we can use the adaptive subdivisions. GPU, perfect. Let's look through the camera. Okay, I'm going to look through like this really close. And then we're going to make sure that this looks 3D printed. So what you want to do here is you want to plug something into this displacement. And you go shift a group and I think I've seen, hold on, where is it? Shift a group, 3D printed layers. You already have this included, okay? So this is the node that you want and you plug that into the displacement. And then it's not gonna change much because we have to go over here. We have to go to the material and set this to a displacement and bump. And for that to work, we have to add a subdivision surface modifier. And that's going to take a while. Okay. We set it to simple and then adaptive. This is important. Okay. Adaptive. And for this adaptive, you need this to be set to experimental in cycles. And then let's look uh, what does the... What does this node actually do? You can easily check that out by simply plugging the displacement into the surface. Uh, no, plugging the height output here into the surface. And we can see that we're not getting any layer lines. So it's probably the scale. So if we look here, this model is a 93 millimeters tall. And by default, this thing here is for really big objects. Um, so we probably want to set this down to, I don't know, one. Oh yeah, we're already getting lay layer lines here. Uh, anyway, I think this is still probably way too big. So now you could figure out uh, what the scale should be here. Maybe if you have a 3D printed model, you might, f uh, I don't know, figure out how many lines do you actually have in this area and then try to replicate this in here with this size. I'm gonna set this down to 2 point, uh, 0 0.25 so that we actually get a lot of layer lines. So now let's plug this back in. We take your material, we take this displacement, put it in here. And what do we lo look like now? We actually get something. Probably need to play with these values. So the displace a scale, let's play with that. Oh yeah, now we're getting some bumps here. Also, if we go over here and to subdivisions, the eight pixels for the viewport, I like to set this to two because eight is really big. It's gonna look very chunky in the viewport. In, in render, you always want one anyway, one pixel. Is it there and we just can't see it, maybe. Let's put in a point light. Move it like back here. Let's see. <laughs> oh, maybe we need to. What is one? What does one give us? Oh, okay, okay. So point five. Point five. Okay. Yeah, so we get layer lines here. Yeah, this is good. Okay, now for the knob, I don't know if you want this to look 3D printed because it has this uh, almost like uh, injection molded kind of design inside. But if you wanted that to look 3D printed, you could do the same thing. Go to this uh, material uh, you're using a translucent plastic, we should just go shift a group. Again, we use the 3D printed layers, put the displacement in here, add a subdivision surface modifier set to simple, 
with adaptive and on the material we have to say displacement and bump so that it actually uses this displacement and then uh, again here for the scale we used 0.25 so 0.25 what does that give us let's do a little preview like that okay uh, displays a scale 0.5 um, imperfections we can take those down a little maybe you want to take that down on this object too and, uh, and now it looks like this but this is not how you would 3d print it you would probably print it laying on this side here so we have to uh, rotate our print direction on the y 90 degrees and then we get this and then this will be the first layer on the print bed and we need the top scale we probably need to bring that down too yeah so it looks like this okay and then can also rotate the top rotation with these but so it would look like this and then if we plug our material back in, this doesn't really look displaced now. Oh, because this isn't plugged in. So what do we look like now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you don't have this translucent or what what is it called? Translucent plastic with this uh, design on the inside. If you just want a translucent plastic, you can also take that... Um, uh, transparent plastic note group which is just like this one the 3d printed layers one you can bring that into your uh, scene and then use that because it has the 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 sort of fake infill which like again i don't think is what you want here okay so i think um all you really need here is to play with the scale values and uh, as I've shown here, if you just want to look at a preview, just put the height into the surface and take away the displacement. And then you can look at the actual, what the layer lines uh, will look like and the direction that they're going. So if you're printing this, for example, on this side, and this would be the first layer, then again, you could use these uh, print direction rotation values and maybe rotate the print direction on the x 45 degrees let's see okay so it will be printing on this side now and then again we need to do the top scale bring that down to 0.2 so that we get this this first layer effect here but if you want it, it on this side, maybe we want to do minus 45. And then this will be the first layer with the first layer lines. And if you have first top rotation, let's do 45 on the C. And then you would have this. Okay, and the layer lines will be going this way. And then this will be the top or the bottom. Okay, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, just write on Blender Market and I will try and help. Okay, thanks, bye.